Trip, trip, trip. Trip. Trip, come here, what's this? There's big dogs. Ow. There's small dogs. Greedy dogs. No, stop it. And speedy dogs. No, 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 Dogs you can't touch. Norman puts a stop to everything. And dogs that love too much. We can't do this every morning, can we? But no matter what the size or the problem... I know that I've done this to him. Graham Hall can fix them all. <laughs> I'll take on any dog, any size. Super, yeah, that's what we want, come on. <laughs> any problem? <laughs> Master dog trainer Graham Hall has helped thousands of desperate dog owners with his regular podcasts and no-nonsense techniques. And the very badly behaved cases keep coming in. This week, a bereaved border collie struggling to get over the loss of his best friend... Nice. ..is torturing his owners with his ear-splitting protests. It is a nightmare. Oof, it makes me feel stressed now, talking about it. Stop it. A Labrador who turns vicious... Stop it! ..around food... Hey. ..is putting her family in daily danger. Come back! Oh, I can't trust her anymore. Come on. Come on, puppy. And a husky with a debilitating phobia... He's really scared of the stairs. ..that takes unusual behaviour to a whole new level... He's shaking and panting, quite stressed out. It's probably going to knock some time off him. It's the last thing I want. Can't imagine life without him. Just want him to be happy. Graham's first job brings him to the Peak District. Ready, Frank? Go on, lad. Where factory shift supervisor Paul and marketing assistant Yvonne live with their beloved seven-year-old border collie, Frank. That was Frank. That was actually the day we got him. He was eight months old then, and that's Robbie. Our other border collie, a beautiful, lovely dog. They both accepted each other. We had good times together, didn't we? Yeah. But tragically, five years ago, those good times came to an end, when the day every dog owner dreads came. And Frank's best friend, Robbie, passed away. When we lost poor Robbie, Frank was looking for him. He must have thought, where is he? Where's he gone? He went out on walks with him, he played with him. He was like his best pal. You know, it must have been sad for him. And within days, still reeling from his loss, a once calm and quiet Frank changed. We're just going now, Frank, we won't be long. Frank, <laughs> that's crazy. Stop it. Anytime anyone leaves him, grief stricken Frank cries out in pain. I presume it's some sort of separation anxiety. He wants us to be with him all the time. He must have got so close to Robbie, he now thinks we're going to go out and not come back. And it's not just saying goodbye that triggers this extreme reaction. When you say hello... Say hello. <laughs> there we go. Doesn't like, doesn't like you saying that word. I think he associates it with a telephone, doesn't he? Frank seems to hate anything that takes attention away from him. But you do dread your phone ringing. <laughs> yes, I've had to come into the garage. We've had lots of important phone calls that he has interrupted and it's a bit awkward with the people once you get to speak to him on the phone. Hello? Hello, just a minute. I'd just like to take my phone in my house and just answer it normally, like everybody else does. But now you have to run through two doors and come in here into the freezing cold to answer your phone. Thanks. Just now, look out here. Living with a Hello? daily barrage of barking... Hello? <laughs> Hello? ..has left Paul and Yvonne at their wit's end. We've put up with this now for five years. And it's, it, oh, I don't know, it just grinds you down. It really does grind you down. It's stressful, it's upsetting. 
Oof, it makes us feel, it makes me feel stressed now talking about it. It is a nightmare, total nightmare. But if we could get help, you know, to change him for the better, that would be absolutely amazing. To get him back to how he was when we had Robbie, it would be life changing. Like humans, bereavement affects dogs in different ways. And like us, they just find their own way of coping. And it could be that barking is Frank's, but he's trying to tell us something. And in order to help him, I need to work out what that is. Hi, Frank. Good to see you. Right? Good morning. Oh, hello. You'll be Come Frank, Frank. Good to hello. see you. Come on in. Thank you very much. Go on, in you go. Well, I don't need to ask you what your problem is, do I? No. God, that's some barky you've got going on there. The problem is it's not when people walk in the house, it's when you leave the house. What, worse than that? It's a nightmare. As soon as you pick your keys up, ah, it's like a riot. Well, I'd like to see it. OK. Ah, look, you see straight away, he's like, hang on a minute. <laughs> oh, here we go. I knew they had a problem with barking, but that's really, really intense. Now, I mean, clearly, Frank doesn't like anybody leaving, but I suspect there's more to it than that. Graham's curious to see what else triggers a barking frenzy. I can hear you now. Wow. I've seen dogs barking when the phone goes off, but I've never seen anything quite like Frank. It is literally impossible to have a conversation in the room when Frank's there. So you've got a chair in the garage, especially? Yeah, talk to people. This is where we have to come. But it's freezing in here. Yeah, it is, yeah. Oh, this is mad. Having seen the full effect Frank's behaviour is having on the family, Graham wants to understand the impact losing their other dog, Robbie, has had on him. Frank started this behaviour, didn't it, after about four days after we lost our other dog, Robbie. Right. And what was Robbie like? Tell me about Robbie. Oh, he was quite... Placid. Polar opposite. Never barked. And how old was Robbie? 14 and right. a half, 15. Yeah. And how old was he at the time? One and a half. Right. He used to go and, like, face. lick his eyes and all around his face. You're still acting a bit like a puppy towards yeah. Oh, yeah. Robbie, then. Yeah. That's very interesting, yeah. Yeah. So tell me about that day, then. Poor Robbie, it was at the end of his day, so obviously we had to take him to the vets. Yeah. He did see us put Robbie in the car, didn't he? Yeah. We came back in without him. Yeah. Four days later, he's on the back of that chair trying to stop us from going out. What do you think's going on in his head, then? I think he loves us so much. He's trying to tell us, don't go through that door. Yeah. Go through that door, you don't come back. Because, obviously, Robbie didn't come back. It's like a separation anxiety. There's always been a question about whether or not dogs feel grief. They are emotional creatures. But, you know, it's five years ago. My gut feel is Frank's kind of over that now. But he's stuck in this habit. They're living a pretty miserable life because of Frank right now. Coming up, Nina. a Labrador that turns into a lunatic around food. Stop it! This really frightens me that she's just going to bite one of us. Nico, a husky with a paralysing fear of stairs. Oh, it's OK, OK, it's OK. Hello? And can Graham help Frank overcome his grief? Good boy. That's good. Oh. Master dog trainer Graham Hall's in the Peak District to help a family with their bereaved collie, Frank, who ever since losing his doggy best friend, Robbie, five years ago, barks... Hello? ..whenever someone answers the phone or leaves the house. He's trying to tell us, don't go through that door. Because, obviously, Robbie didn't come back. It's like a separation anxiety. Owners Paul and Yvonne think his uncontrollable outbursts are a result of his grief. But Graham has come to a surprising conclusion. 
let's start with what I think it's not. Separation anxiety. Really? I think what's happened is Robbie's gone and he's looked around for somebody that might replace Robbie as the one to look up to. And I'm afraid he didn't find it in you. <laughs> <laughs> and then he's kind of gone, looks like it's me then. <laughs> Trouble is, he didn't know what to do. He's shouting at everybody. Don't leave. Do not leave. Yeah. Next minute, don't answer the phone. Don't speak to somebody else. How dare you, sir? So basically, we're Frank's pushovers. Well, yes. Ish. So somehow we've got to demote him, and I've got to turn you two into natural born leaders. <laughs> <laughs> Robbie was old and frail by all accounts, but he sounded like a dog who'd been round the block. He knew how to do it. Frank knew it. And he, he hasn't seen leadership since, not for five years. Graham believes the solution to all their problems is devastatingly simple. Frank needs to be shown who's boss. So let's say Frank reacts badly, so he's barking and spinning. I'll then say, quiet, but in the right tone of voice with the right look on the face. Um, you know, that really says, no, I don't approve. When he simmers down, we give him a little bit of praise. So he's, we're telling him what we don't want, no, quiet, and what we do want, a oh, good boy, when, he's, when he is calm. Graham wants to tackle Frank's shouting around phone calls first, but will he listen? Let's play a ringtone. Yeah. <laughs> Quiet. Good boy. Right, let's try again then. Hello. <laughs> no. Quiet. Oh, good boy. So far, so good. Hello. Hello. <laughs> no. Quiet. Good boy. That's good. Remarkably, with a firm command followed by praise, in just a matter of minutes, Frank follows the leader and pipes down when Graham's on the blower. Hey, quiet. Good boy. Hello. Yes, yes, it is, yeah. And with a very important customer called Frank. Not bothered, Frank. No, he's not, is he? Yeah. Hello. Good boy. Crikey. <laughs> That's really amazing. Never thought I'd ever see Frank so calm when the phone rang. I feel like I'm not looking at the same dog. He's so chilled out. Leaders have rules, don't they? And the rule here is, if I want to answer the phone and speak to somebody, guess what? I can. But after five years of being worn down by Frank, can Paul step up to the mark? Why don't you have a go, Paul? Let's see what you got. <laughs> <laughs> Struggling to find leadership qualities, yet again, Paul is bossed about by Frank. Right, let's try that again. Hello? Luckily, Graham's at the other end of the phone to give Paul advice. I just think you're hello. You sound very nervous, because what I've seen you do is you've gone... Hello? <laughs> it's like I can wait for an atom bomb to go off, isn't it? It's because of what you're used to, yeah. 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 But here's the thing. If you're acting as though you think there's something to be scared of, yeah. what's he to think? So will Paul be able to act the part and show Frank he's in charge? OK, let's try it again, Paul. Hello? Quiet! <laughs> Good boy. Got a dog here that can't stop barking. <laughs> Yeah. Good boy. OK, good boy. Much better. Yeah. Let's do one again, then. Let's prove the point. Hello, there. Boy. Hiya. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hiya. How are you? How are you doing? Nice, right. nice to meet you. That's very good. Good boy. Good boy. It is a lovely moment there. He looked at you as if to say, is this what you want? Yeah. You want me to do nothing? Yeah. You know? Good boy for doing nothing? Yeah. Yes. I'm impressed. Big breakthrough. By Paul delivering a message with conviction, Frank's beginning to see him as the leader he lost after his doggy pal Robbie passed away. I'm going. But there's much more work to be done on the couple's leadership skills if they're ever to leave the house in peace. I wish I could say that Paul and Yvonne were... They've got it. They're leaders now. That's it. It's, it's fine. I, I think they've seen the light. I think they've seen the way to do it but they do have to keep practising. Frankly, there is a chance this could all go back to square one.
Whilst Graham figures out how to make strong leaders of Paul and Yvonne, his next job takes him 190 miles south to Essex to take on a cute family dog Enough. with a split personality. Stop. When Carpenter Steve and his wife Natalie decided to get a dog for their young children, Sam and Annabelle, they opted for a trusted family favourite, a Labrador. Luna's really cuddly. She loves the kids to bits. She loves playing with them. Yeah, she's just extra happy when the kids are around. But Luna is like a real-life Jekyll and Hyde. And food is the potion that flicks her switch. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Enough. Enough. Stop. This started about six months ago. Um, I thought it was a good idea to get her a, a bone from the pet shop. And I went to get it off her, and that's when she then really started growling. I take it away. Stop it. You want to go in your bed? In your bed. Stay away, kids. Stay away. It really frightens me that she's just going to bite on the bus. Since that fateful day, every dinner time is fraught with danger. Stop. Put her food over here so she's away from everyone else. Hey, I'm back! Never knowing which Luna they're going to get has left the family living in fear. When she's really showing her teeth. So it does sort of scare me, especially when the kids are in the room. There's a real fear that Luna could end up attacking one of them, really. Out! Now! Scary when she's like that, isn't she? Mm. I feel like I can't trust her anymore. How would you feel if we had to get her put down because she bit me or you? Just thinking about it makes me too if we don't get help with Luna and she carries on behaving like this, that we will have to get rid of her. Coming home and seeing the kids' faces would kill me. It just would... It'd break my heart. The one thing about Labradors I think everybody knows is that they love their food, they're really food driven. So on the rare occasions I am called out to see a lab, it's usually something to do with food. Usually stealing it, I have to say. Food aggression is pretty rare. Hello. Hi, Graham. Come on in. Thank you. Well, she seems lovely. When there's no food around, by all accounts. Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's the problem. Yeah. She is quite scary when we feed her in a bowl. She does all the showing of the teeth, starts growling and getting aggressive. Does she do that with everybody? Yes, she does do it with everyone. And is she worse with any particular person? She seems to be worse with my husband. Right. Aha. Uh -huh. Yes. Well, maybe we can see the problem. Is that possible? Yeah. Good girl. Luna. What's this? Come on. It's a good girl. That's a good girl. Right, Luna, stop. Stop. I don't know if you try <coughs> Stop. Stop that. Stop. Look, stop. Good girl, Luna. Good girl. Stop it. Stop it. That's a good girl. So Steve's approach is confrontation. Stop. Stop. Stop that. He's going in there, not taking no for an answer, pulling the food away from her. At the same time, he's saying, good girl, he's stroking her when she's growling. And crucially, he's putting the food back down while she's growling. So you've obviously got a bit of a method going on there, Steve. What's the thinking? I just feel that I should be the leader of the pack and I'm the one that decides when she has food and if she has that aggression, then I should take it away. And then you, you, you put it back at one point. Yeah, I tried to see if she's going to change her mind and not growl at me and bark and stuff like that. OK, Steve, I've seen enough. Do you want to come back and join yeah. the family? But once Luna's lost it, she holds a grudge. Oh, no, come on, it's OK. Shh. 
Stop it. Oi. Out. Go on. Is that as bad as it gets? Unless you give her a bone, yeah. So where did it start then? How did it begin? It started about six or seven months ago. Uh, someone brought her a fresh bone and my daughter walked past her and all of a sudden she just growled. I got her just by the collar and sort of like just pulled her away, so, but she was really trying to get the bone sort of thing. So you're protecting your family? Yeah. She's protecting a bone. Yes. How, did it, how did it end? The bone was in the bin. <laughs> right. Quite extremist behaviour for a Labrador. And there are children involved. She's in a mood where she's going to bite people when she doesn't get what she wants. You know, Luna's going to get herself either rehomed or possibly even put to sleep. And I don't think that's unrealistic, I'm sad to say. Coming up... You have to carry him up. <laughs> you don't, do you? Yeah. Nico, a Siberian husky with a crippling phobia. It's such a ridiculous problem to have. Will Graham be able to put an end to Luna's food frenzies? Hey, no, holy man. And can he make natural-born leaders out of Yvonne and Paul? Frankly, it looked like you'd had an accident. Right, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Luna, stop. Master dog stop. trainer Graham Hall's in Essex, helping the Clack family and their Labrador, who's a real-life Jekyll and Hyde. Stop it. Lena. Lovable Luna turns Luna tick every time her food is served. Stop it! This really frightens me that she's just going to bite one of us. With the family living in daily danger... That's enough. ..it's time for some home truths. Let's go back to where this started from, right? You brought this bone in, she's growled, you've then gone, oh, you think, dear, <laughs> and she's lost her bone. You probably scared the life out of her without realising it, you know? Right, yeah. And then, come dinner time, she's gone, right, Dad, food, oh, this is a bad combination. So she's carried on growling, and then, if it's anything like I've seen this morning, you're taking the ball away, and then she's still growling at you, and while she's growling, you go, right, then, let's try again, then. Yeah. And then even worse than that, you're know, going, come on, good girl, good girl. You're stroking her and telling her she's a good girl. Yeah. You've been playing with fire, really, because... You're creating a worse version of Luna yeah. and then rewarding it. Yeah, no, that definitely makes sense. I feel sort of strange that she feels scared that I'm taking the food away because I want her to be comfortable around me and around the family, so glad that I've been told that and we can sort of change my attitude to it as well. If Luna's food frenzies continue... Stop. ..the family may have no choice but to part ways with their beloved dog. <laughs> But Graham has a plan to take the danger out of dinner time and make feeding Luna conflict free. Luna thinks when people approach, we're going to take food away. But if we put an empty bowl on the floor and then approached her with a little bit of food in her hand to drop it in and did that repeatedly, she's going to begin to realise that approaching a bowl is a good thing. We're adding food, we're never taking it away. Well, the proof is in the pudding. Do you want to get a couple of little bits of her kibble and put it in a bowl, that's it? To build trust, Steve will keep the food with him. There you go. Step away. There you go. Come on. Good. Right, a bit more. That's it. That's all you need. And Luna quickly realises he's not a threat. A couple more. Good girl, Luna. Good girl. Good, I think we're seeing a change already. Yeah, her facial expressions just completely changed, a bit happier. Yeah. It's a healthy start, but Graham wants to mix things up. Let's get rid of the mug, because the mug kind of says, I've definitely got some food here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What I want us to think is, like, well, he might have food in his hand when he goes to the bowl, it might not, but it's still OK. Yeah. yeah. Right, when you're ready. <laughs> hey, no. But with Luna about to turn... Hold your ground. Has Graham added too much heat in the kitchen? That's it. Just wait, wait, wait. And then wait for it to back off. Good girl. Good girl. Right, if you put some food in the bowl now, look. And step away. Good girl. See? Brilliant. Good girl. So, very different approach. You're not backing off. 
Yeah. You're not shouting at her, you're not taking the ball away, but you are just standing your ground and going, really? Yeah. With Luna understanding not a morsel will be withdrawn, Graham's avoided a food fight. Time to turn things up a notch. Let's put a reasonable amount of food down in the bowl. Yeah. So she's noshing away at it, right? And then I want you to leave your hand lingering for a second or two. And hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, that's it. Hold on, and walk away. Good that's girl. It. And she's just laid down. Yeah. She's next to a food bowl. How rare is that? Very. <laughs> right, kids, come on in. Go to your mum and dad. Well, I think we've got something to show you. Natalie, you know what to do. OK. For the last seven months, Luna's split personality around meals has made dinner times dangerous for the whole family. But by simply taking the fight out of the food... She's not growling. I know, that's good, isn't it? They can break bread in peace. What about with Dad? Would she still grow with you? <laughs> Shall we find out? Yeah. With the food feud over, they're left with just one Luna, the one they all love. <laughs> Amazing. Will we not have to get her new home or put her down? No. I'm proud of Luna and Daddy. Uh, and <laughs> Mummy. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to mean a lot to this family, um, to all of them, but I'm thinking particularly about Annabelle. I mean, she looked scared to death this morning, bless her, um, and, and really sad and upset. My heart really went out to her. But she looked a different girl this afternoon. She's happy. <laughs> there you go. From sad to happy in a day is an amazing journey. With Luna no longer a loon around food, Graham's heading to Birmingham, where recently married charity coordinator Prabneet and IT consultant Nilesh... Good boy. You bork. ..live with their dream it? doggy companion, Nico. I don't know why, ever since I was young, I've always wanted a husky. <laughs> Just a snow dog and so close to a wolf. So it's all got that bit of wild in them. And it was like a call from the wild when they first set eyes on this dog built for the extremes. I think what sealed the deal for me was when I was holding him, he just yawned in my face. <laughs> I was like, OK, here's the one. <laughs> Let's go! Come on, this way. Come on, up. Come on, puppy. But for this intrepid husky created for Arctic conditions, there's just one mountain he can't climb. Come on. No, let's go. Let's go. I don't know what it is. He He's just really scared of the stairs. Come on, up, up. Come on. Go on, boy. No matter how much they tempt him... Shall I get you some cheese? Good boy. Come on, let's go. There's only one way to get 20 kilo Nico to the top. Whoa. You know, we do have to carry him. And then when he's at the top of the stairs and he needs to come down... Oh, it's OK, OK, it's OK. He's just shaking and panting and just... You know, clearly quite stressed out. Come on, come on. You're gonna do it. Come on, come on let's go. Come on, come on. Come on, puppy. Come on. Nico's paralyzing on, fear boy. is also come stopping on. this adventurer of the doggy world from exploring the great outdoors. Come on, you can do it. Come on, let's go. Every set of stairs is a step too far. Come on. Nico's anxiety around ascending has put a halt on all their movements. We've been trying to go away for, for about a year now and just, like, looking at places that are just unsuitable for a dog that can't <laughs> go up the stairs. You want him to see the world while he's here? Yeah. As much as he can. We all want to go places together and see things. Desperate to break free and explore the world... Good boy. Come on. Come on, then. Let's do some training. Prabneet and Nilesh have gone small to fix their very big problem. Good boy. Come on. And your foot. Come on. To try and train him out of this weird phobia, we've got, like, a little flight of stairs. Foot. Foot. Every day, stress can't be good for him. It's probably going to knock some time off him. It's the last thing I want. I can't imagine life without him. Just want him to be happy. It's a fairly unusual problem, a dog's scared of going upstairs. I have seen it a couple of times. I don't think I've seen it in a husky. Bred, of course, famously to pull sleds along in the Arctic. But then, I suppose, there are no stairs in the Arctic. Hi, Graham. Hello, hiya. Hi. This must be Nico, then. Yeah, this is Nico. Come on in. Thank you. 
So you've got rather an unusual problem by all accounts. Yeah, and we've tried everything we can to get him up the stairs, but he's just scared. He starts shaking and doesn't want to do it. Do you want to show me what you do? Yeah, we'll give it a go. Yeah. Nico, come on in. Shall we go upstairs? <laughs> yeah, don't look at me. Nico, what's this? What's this? Come on. Good boy. Come on. Come on, this way. So what you got there? Perhaps a bit of cheese. Cheese. Uh. It's his favourite. Good boy. Good boy. Come on. Yeah, good boy. Come on, you can do it. Come on. It's cheese. Go on, get the cheese. Come on. Good boy. This is as far as it'll go. His right foot will go into the first step, but his left foot won't move at all. Wow. So how do you get him upstairs when you need to? You have to carry him up. <laughs> you don't, do you? Yeah. Otherwise, he just sits there whining. Can I see it? Yeah. <laughs> It's just so ridiculous. Like, it's such a ridiculous problem to have. I do think there's an underlying thing here where Nico, in effect, has become a spoiled dog. Have you done any training with him? Yeah, we do. We've got some little steps in the living room. Shall we go through? Yeah. OK. Oh, good boy. Up. Foot. They've obviously got a command. Oh, your foot. Come up. Foot. It's exactly the same pattern as the proper stairs. He'll go up, but he's always keeping one on the ground. Good boy. And he's had a drink, so... Why would you go any further, yeah? Right, let's have a chat, shall we? How long has he been like this, then? About a year. When he was a puppy, we didn't let him go upstairs. It's because of the risk of hip dysplasia. So it's common in these larger breeds that... Right. ..that can happen, so that's the last thing I wanted. In the long run, it would really affect him doing anything normal. Mm. Maybe even walking, he might not be able to do. Yeah. Hip dysplasia is a condition where the joints aren't very well formed. When the dog's young, it's a condition they've got for the rest of their lives, and it can leave them in an awful lot of pain. But here's the thing. Huskies aren't number one on a list of breeds that are affected by it, but all big dogs can get hip dysplasia. So it was right to be aware of the problem, but I just think they, they overdid their response and created themselves another problem. Now, to break the news. So, you think he's got, like, a real phobia, but because you got so desperate to avoid hip displays, you've actually caused this problem. No stairs whatsoever. No surprise, really, I guess, that one day he went, no, this isn't normal. OK. But the big problem is that you haven't trained what you think you've trained. You've trained something really specific. Go three steps up, right? Get your right leg on the bottom step. Keep your left paw on the ground, and then we'll say lovely things to you and give you treats. OK. It makes a lot of sense. It does make sense, really. We just tried to make the stairs like a happy place, and we tried to sort of positively condition him. But I think there does need to be an element of you have to do it. Mm. OK. I think I'm a little bit frustrated that we've been training him to potentially do the wrong thing. Yeah. He's been taking advantage of us. I am really relieved that it's not just, you know, an irrational fear, something that he can't get over. With no medical reasons stopping this hesitant husky from going upstairs, Graham believes that Nico isn't actually afraid of them and wants to show him there's nothing to fear. What I'm going to be teaching Nico is really quite simple. There's no problem with stairs. Stairs are fine. I haven't got a problem with stairs. They don't scare me. And we can do this together, mate. If you come with me, I'll love you for it. But you do have to do it. So I put the lead on because, you know, I've got control of him then. We're going to work as a team, me and him. We're going to go up and down here together with the lead on. I will be shocked if you manage to get him up there. Well, prepared to be shocked. OK. <laughs> come on, young man, up you go. Come on. Come on. Good boy, yes. Clever boy, come on. Yeah, there you Jeff go. Good puppy. Oh, my God. Good boy. Come on. That's Jeff super. Boy. Clever boy, yay. Right, let's do that a couple of times. And practice. Good boy, yeah, look. Good. Makes perfect. Good boy! Yay. He's a clever lad. Nico begins to realise there's nothing to panic about. Look at that! Good boy! Good boy! <laughs> no hesitation! My mind's blown. Like, I can't believe you've done that. He was 
nervous, but I just knew if we could do it a few times, build up his confidence, he would be OK. In fact, towards the end, he's like, let's do it again, let's do it again. He's like, stairs, I'm a bothered. But will Prabneet and Nilesh be able to reach the heady heights of Graham's success? I'm a bit nervous. Oh, yeah. But I'm determined. Good. Let's go. Come on. Come on. Let's go. Yeah. Well done. So easy. After living in fear of his own stairs for over a year, Nico is finally taking them in his stride. And no one's happier than his proud parents. I'm ecstatic. I can't stop smiling. <laughs> It means we can go places. It means we can take him on holiday with us. It's just going to make life so much easier. But Graham's not done yet. I think I want to go a stage further. He believes Nico's ready to fly solo. Right, Niels, when you're ready, let him go and just go, OK, something like that. OK, come on then. OK. Come on. Good boy! Good boy! <laughs> Good boy! <laughs> With Nico's phobia finally fixed, the world is now their oyster. This is the kind of training that really changes lives. Um, for Nico, it means that the world's now opened up. For Prams and Neils, it means, yeah, that they can take their dog with them to holiday cottages and all those places. But it also means they can plan for the future. Good boy. Good boy. Coming up... He's still thinking of a bark, I'll get what I want. Graham may have stopped Frank shouting every time the phone rings. Right, off you go. But his toughest challenge, getting Paul and Yvonne out of the house in peace, still awaits. Quiet. It's coming to the end of Graham Hall's working week, and he's got unfinished business in the Peak District. Paul and Yvonne believed their bereaved border collie Frank was suffering from separation anxiety after losing his doggy brother, and that was causing his outbursts. But Graham discovered the only thing Frank was missing no. was leadership. Quiet. This time, both Paul and Yvonne need to up their game. Otherwise, Frank will continue to call the shots every time they leave the house. Go through that door and that's what you get. It is a nightmare. When I was here last, I really felt that Paul and Yvonne were on the right track. Now, clearly, they had to practice, so it'll have either fallen apart around their ears or I'll be walking back in to see two people who've got it. We'll find out which of those two it is, won't we? Still back at the door. Hello. Hello, Hello. 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 you all right? Hello, you. Come here, then. How have you got on with the phone? All right. You've been saying hello. Hello, yeah. yeah. Good boy. And nothing. Good. But we've still got this massively ingrained habit at the door, haven't we? Yeah. yeah. Um, so that's what we need to work on today. Right. Why is Frank barking the way he does? Well, he barks because he gets attention. So we need to reward him with something that works for him, that'll be attention then, when he's quiet. And that's the key. He must only get attention, only be rewarded when he's quiet. Let's get started. Graham is going to build on the success they had last time by using the same simple technique. Quiet. So as soon as he starts to go, yeah. push your chest out a little bit, it's like, really? Hey, who's in charge round here now? Yeah. yeah. Yeah? Good boy. Also, the praise, nice and calm, because we want to keep him calm. There we go. Who's a clever lad, eh? See you then. Quiet. Good. After just a couple of attempts, Frank is following the leader. Good boy. Well, that's the dog trained. <laughs> now us. Now trained. <laughs> and Graham believes there's power in numbers. What I really want to do today is get Paul and Yvonne working together as a team. One person leaves the house while the other one puts in the right signals to Frank. Paul, you can swap places with me and we'll make a start. OK. But will they be able to show Frank who's boss? Right, off you go. That's it, and stop. What you got? Nothing. Good boy. That's it. Yvonne? Good boy. Good boy, Frank. Quiet! While Yvonne Quiet. is showing she can be Quiet. in charge... Quiet! 
Paul is crumbling under the pressure. When you went out the door then, frankly, it looked like you'd had an accident. Because <laughs> you're like... Yes! <laughs> Don't do that. Just go, I will be leaving. <laughs> you know, nice and confident, calm. Right, let's try that again, Paul. Good boy. Good lad. That's it. Right, and come back. Good. Oh, great. So far, so good. Good boy. That's it. And as soon as Paul leaves like he means it... Good boy. Frank looks up to him. I don't know about you, but at this stage, all I really want to do is jump up and down and shout. Because <laughs> this is, like, fantastic. Paul looked the pass and Yvonne sounded the pass. The part being the part of a leader. Frank was looking up to them going, yeah, OK, fair enough, I'll follow you to the ends of the earth. What's this going to mean for you, then? Life-changing. To leave the house in peace and quiet, it's just fantastic. Never thought I'd see it. Do you feel different? Yeah. Yeah. I feel like I'm in charge for the first time. Yeah. It's calm, it's chill, you know, everything. It just feels different. Your body language has changed. You're stood there doing your little power pose now. <laughs> I feel in charge. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Done it at last. Before Graham leaves them in peace after five years of Frank's shouting the odds, he has one final test up his sleeve. What we're going to do is all three of us leave. Yeah, right. give us a try. Off you go then, Yvonne, number Good one. Bye. Well, that's OK. Good boy, right, Paul, number two. Good boy, Frank. Good boy, that's fine. Good boy. Here we go. Good boy. There you go. Good lad. That's it. Good boy. Yes! <laughs> Good. Well, as they say, I think my work here is done. I'm going to hit the road. Right. All the best, guys. Thank you. Training went absolutely amazing. Graham's put us on the right path. We know now exactly what to do. And Frank has totally changed. It's like he's a different dog. So it's like a huge impact now on our lives because our, all our lives, for all of us, will seem a lot calmer. In Birmingham, Nico's fully cured, so Pradneet and Nilesh are already planning their first getaway, and there's no stopping them seeing the world together. For Luna, mealtimes are once again happy affairs. Even the kids are now getting in on the feeding fun. I've even fed her and she's in rabbit and I'm happy and I don't feel scared around her anymore. Look at Frank, totally calm. And with Frank's training going from strength to strength, Paul and Yvonne are finally enjoying some well-earned peace and quiet. If you think your badly behaved dog could do with Graham's help, then why not get in touch? Details can be found at www.channel5.com forward slash get involved. Thank you.